Well, hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. This is Hunter from Mount Ash Photography. Join me tonight as we are diving deep into the Milky Way galaxy for one of the most famous photos of all time taken from the Hubble Space Telescope. Tonight, we are going after the Eagle Nebula or better known as the Pillars of Creation. Now, I don't really get to do these targets very often, especially from where I used to live out in closer towards the water areas. My south was never very good and these targets don't really get that high off of the horizon here in the state of Delaware. So I have short amount of time that I have to use to capture that data. And I captured a little bit of it last year, but it definitely wasn't enough. Five hours of HA03 is not really enough to do it justice. And plus from the time we didn't have dual narrowband filters to capture O3 and sulfur 2 as well so it's going to be nice to revisit this target here especially from a, a darker location and be able to have a much better horizon as well now tonight unfortunately i will not be using the pier because here in the backyard although i have an excellent horizon at least from the east side the north and especially the west the south on the other hand is covered by trees so, in order for me to have full access to the southern sky, we got to set up there in the side yard. Now, what's setting up over here by this uh, massive tree, at least I can still see north, but if we look over top of the house, that's where it rises right between that little hole, and it goes all the way above the power lines. And then by the time it gets to about sunrise, It'll just be barely crossing over the power line, so don't have to really worry about obstructions too much. I was always fascinated by the pillars of creation, especially growing up when I was, you know, just a little kid back in the 90s. I always look through textbooks and find that these beautiful pillars coming out, very colorful, those really dark, rich gases coming straight out of the center of that emission nebula. And to be able to actually capture it my own self really brings back those childhood memories of mine. But the Eagle Nebula has always been a heavily influential target for me, but I haven't really been able to capture it too well just because of the location of where I'm at. So we're gonna be changing things up even though I captured data from last year. Tonight, we're gonna to be capturing now in the sulfur and oxygen three spectrum as well. So not only, I already have about five hours of HA, I'll combine the two nights of oxygen, so you're basically doubling that, and I'll be capturing sulfur around the inside of, to kind of give it that nice structure, because sulfur, what I've found out, especially with these dual narrow pan filters from Ascar, they really bring out the rich detail, especially when recently I did the, the North American Nebula NGC 7000, as well as did the Omega Nebula, which I did that a couple nights ago that I didn't really film a video for, but we had a lot of videos coming up for this, but tonight we're really gonna make this one shine. Now I'm not gonna lie, it does feel a little weird just using the original uh, TC40 tripod instead of using my pier for the last two months or so, but hey, you gotta do what you gotta do. But tonight I'm gonna be shooting the Pillars of Creation with my 4-inch Explorer Scientific Triplet Refractor. Now the native focal length is 714 millimeters, but I am using a Starfield Optics 0.8x reducer, putting it down to a f5.6 system at 571 millimeters. And of course, going to be using the trusty AM5 mount with the pier extension and the CWO TC40 tripod. And of course, until the 5A5 mono ever comes out, I'm currently using tonight the ZWO ASI 2600MC Pro. Inside of the filter wheel here, I'm going to be using the Ascar D2 Color Magic filter for sulfur and oxygen 3. Guiding tonight, I'm going to be using the 60mm SV Boney guide scope with my planetary camera. The ASI 174mm and of course controlling everything the 256 gigabyte version of the ASI Air Plus. Now you know all the details regarding what kind of setup we're going to be using tonight. Let's get a little bit of some details as to 
where the Eagle Nebula is located and a little bit of some facts behind it before sundown so we can go ahead and pour a line. Messier 13, also known as the Eagle Nebula, is a young, open cluster of stars located in the constellation of Serpents. It gained fame due to the striking Pillars of Creation photographed by the Hubble Space Telescope, showcasing towering pillars and gas and dust where new stars are forming. The nebula is approximately 7,000 light years away from Earth and spans about 70 by 55 light years in size. Messier 16 is a region of active star formation with young, hot, illuminating stars in the surrounding gas clouds, creating a visually stunning cosmic landscape. Now that we're back here at the computer, I already stacked the brand new data of the Sulfur 2 and Oxygen 3 from the previous night. Also stacked together the data from last year with the L Ultimate filter. So let's see what it looks like directly at a stack here. Go ahead and just do a unlinked auto STF on both. Man, that Sulfur 2 and O3 data looks fantastic. So the first thing we're gonna do is uh, use some dynamic background extraction. And I'm using the brand new SETI Astro Automatic DBE because it is very, very good. Go ahead and replace the target. I just like to use the default settings. The default settings do just perfectly fine. Take a minute to run that. All right, both are done. We'll have to restretch our images now. That did great. Now the next thing we're gonna do is blur exterminator on both. And then we're gonna do some noise reduction. I'm gonna be using the brand new deep SNR of a video on this tool here because you're gonna be pleasantly surprised at the results that you have from denoise with this one. There we go, now our images are dynamic background extracted, blurred X, and noise, reduc noise reduction. Now let's go ahead and begin to extract our channels so we can go ahead and make our Hubble palette version of this. So go ahead to extract this one right here the red channel for this is the HA. I'm just going to stick that aside. I'm going to go ahead and rename these as green and blue. Go over here to my Pixinsight uh, script to go ahead and combine those green and blue channels. So we have one of our oxygens. Stick that one off to the side as well. Minimize that, we don't need that anymore. We'll do the same thing for our Sulfur 2 and Oxygen 3 data. The red channel is Sulfur 2. Rename these blue, green, combine them together. We have our second oxygen channel. Get rid of that one and get rid of that one. And then now we're going to combine our oxygen channels together to have one master oxygen file. And just like that. So let's go ahead and get our images stretched here from our three channels. And I'm just gonna use the simple unlink stretch from Bill Blanchin for these. They'll all be stretched the same amount. The 
oxygen is so rich in this region. So there we go. We have our oxygen, we have our hydrogen, and we have our sulfur data, which the sulfur data is mwah, chef's kiss. Look at the detail in the pillars right there. That is fantastic. All right, so let's go ahead and combine our images together. LRGB combination. HA for luminance. Sulfur 2 for red. Hydrogen alpha for green. And oxygen for blue. Apply global. And let's see what we got. And there we go. Wow, look how amazing that looks. Although the stars are not really that good, but we're going to fix that anyway later on down the line. I'm already loving the colors of this, so let's go ahead and start working on the actual nebula itself and really begin to bring out a lot of this detail. So let's go ahead and just remove the stars. We're going to get rid of these stars anyway because we're not going to use these narrowband stars. Here we go, we got rid of the stars. And now we're just left with the nebulosity itself in the background. And man, talk about an improvement compared to, say, just one regular hydrogen alpha O3 filter. I mean, you still get good detail, but when you really combine them together with the sulfur data, it looks outstanding. And doing a little bit of some narrowband normalization. We can start playing with the colors a little bit more. We can enhance the sulfur data somewhat. We can take out a little bit of the green, but I think the green really makes it pop out for the most part. Highlight reduction. So we can actually see the pillars really good. Yeah, that looks really good right there. We can boost the oxygen a little bit too if we wanted to, but it's already pretty strong enough. Turn off the preserve highlights, and there we go. Look how beautiful that looks in general. Go ahead and do some sharpening for this. And you really start making those pillars come out. I also want to get rid of some of this magenta that's in the background. And the simple thing I like to use is just correct magenta stars over the whole image. And there we go. And that took care of that weird magenta. And already I'm just loving this image. I'm going to continue to process further on. And then I'm going to show you the final results because I don't want to bore you for another 20 minutes of me just deciding on what colors exactly I want to use rather to show you the final product. After playing around with the colors and whatnot, we have our brand new stars that I just took from the Octogen 3 and 03 after that's already color calibrated. And then this is our nebulosity here that we have. So let's go ahead and combine them together to see what kind of result we get. And there we go, there appears to be our final image. I'm going to do a little bit of some star reduction here just to kind of tone down these stars overall with this tool from Bill Blanchin and Mike Cranford as well. I'm going to protect the smaller stars in general. Especially the ones inside of the pillars itself. And there we have it. Here is our final image of the Eagle Nebula after taking data from last year and adding the brand new Sulfur 2 and Oxygen 3 data from the Ascar D2. And look how beautiful those pillars are. Not quite the Hubble, but definitely very nice in general. Well, I hope everyone enjoyed the video today. Hope this helps as well. I have plenty of PixInsight tutorials for those who happen to have one-shot color cameras and the two duo band filters to get the Hubble palette with color cameras. 
I'll have all that in the ending credits here. But thank you for watching as always. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I do have affiliate links down below if you plan on buying anything from High Point or Regina Astro. If you want to get your hands on these filters or basically if you plan on shopping anyway, it just helps me out a little bit of no cost to you. We're still getting very close to the watch hours needed to add monetization to the channel so I can receive a little bit back from YouTube continue to you know share out the videos they really do help me a lot so thank you as always clear skies and i will see you in the next video